Walt Disney and his team of animators were in the planning stages of an animated short that would use a classical piece to tell its story. Paul Dukas's The Sorcerer's Apprentice, itself based on a popular German fable. This short film would have no dialogue and simply use the music and animation to show all what happened. However, the budget was so high for a short film that Disney had the grand idea of creating other animated shorts set to classical music and then combined to make one large concert film. Collaborating with famed conductor Leopold Stokowski, Fantasia was born, an absolutely stunning achievement of sight and sound. Using the composition of classical poses as different as Beethoven and Ponchielli, Fantasia still stands as Disney's magnum opus. Of course, the most popular short is The Sorcerer's Apprentice, starring Mickey Mouse, in the rare role that portrayed him as flawed. Another popular comedic segment was Dance of the Owls, with a group of hippos, alligators, and ostriches duking it out. There was also a more serious segment, like The Night on Bold Mountain, showing the devil summoning the spirits out of hell to cause ruckus on the world before being summoned back down again by Franz Schubert's Ave Maria. However, my favorite segment is definitely The Rite of Spring by Igor Stravinsky. Using the evolution of the Earth, and the birth and death of dinosaurs, this beautifully composed 22-minute segment is a sight for the eyes and the senses. The bravery of Disney to create such a segment is especially something to call. For Fantasia, Disney really wanted to make this a special event. He created a surround sound type system that was a precursor to the Dolby one used in cinemas today, and created a special program to give it that concert hall feeling. Despite critical acclaim, though, the film is a flop of the box office. As befell Pinocchio, the event of World War II led to there not being much interest in an artsy animated film. For years, the Disney studio re-released the film, hoping it would finally make back its budget. It finally managed to break even in the late 1960s, when the sight of dusty mushrooms and spaced out colors attracted the acid taking of teenagers at the time. It seems like an odd way for Fantasia to finally attain the status of a classic, but despite Walt Disney actually being ashamed at the initial failure, it's definitely one of the best films he produced in his lifetime. Despite how cinematically brilliant Fantasia was, there was no denying that this was a flop, and Disney realized he needed to make something cheap, fun, and quick. The result was Dumbo. The story of an elephant with giant ears who overcomes prejudice to become a huge star. After the darkness that loomed over the first three films, the intent of adapting Helen Abbotson's picture book was to provide an audience watching War Rage On to escape to the flicks for a good time. Dumbo was certainly that, with his high flying energy, adorable main character they could really root for, and a simple design that could appeal to everybody and not simply the art critics. Running only 60 minutes was so caught up in the story that when it ends, we're left wanting more. Nonetheless, the film is still fueled with many classic Disney moments. Everyone remembers the infamous Elephant on Parade scene, but the best scene is when Dumbo visits his caged mother, and she sings a song that will make even grown men cry. Dumbo definitely stands as a touching, funny film that shows we can achieve anything if we work hard and ignore those who doubt our abilities. Dumbo also proved to be a success for Disney, becoming a huge hit and bringing them back to catching the audience's attention. Shortly after the release of the film, the United States Army entered the Second World War and took over the Disney Studios, leading to Disney making a series of package films throughout the 1940s. They did manage to make one feature film before the army moved in. In 1942, Disney released Bambi, the coming-of-age story of a young deer trying to survive in the dangerous world of the forest. Think of it almost like the curious case of Benjamin Button, only it's about a deer, and he ages forward. For this film, Disney wanted to go for a more realistic feel, and advised the animators to go to the Los Angeles Zoo to research the various animals that we'll be drawing. The animals are definitely animated incredibly well. One of the images in animation history that really stick out in my mind is when Bambi is just learning how to walk. 
The art direction in the film is also lovely, and even when there is nothing happening on screen, you can still behold the artistry of it all. It's quite difficult to talk about Bambi and not mention the death of the mother, which is definitely up there with Optimus Prime dying as one of the most traumatic scenes in animation history. The fact that it all happens off screen only adds to the chilling feel of it. It even inspired Paul McCartney to be an animal rights activist. It makes me wonder why it's because of Fern Gully that Bono is so annoying. Anyway, the scene is definitely one of the most shocking in any Disney film. Well, the rest of the film is just as impressive. And although it didn't recoup its cost on the initial release, the subsequent re-release did do well enough for Disney to realize that releasing the films again every couple of years or so would really pour money into their pockets. Hey, the man was an artist, but no big profit was on his mind. And that's the end of the first episode. In the next one, I'm going to be taking a look at the package films did Disney would release throughout the rest of the decade. Hope you enjoyed that first look back, because there are going to be plenty more. Goodbye. When you wish upon a star, make no difference who you are.